Project Cost Management. Those are words that sometimes strike fear into the heart of a project manager because they have that kind of air of mathematical magic and mystery. But actually, it's quite straightforward. But it's also a vital discipline because there is almost certainly nothing your project sponsor, your boss, or your client, or certainly their finance director will care more about than your budget, how you spend it, and how you keep it under control. So in this video, I want to look at how you can deliver effective project cost management. Mentally, I divide project cost management into two disciplines. On the one hand, we've got estimating and budgeting. And on the other hand, we've got monitoring and controlling that budget. The PMI's project management body of knowledge defines project cost management as one of its 10 essential knowledge areas, and it splits it into four basic processes. The first is to plan your cost management, which is effectively the wraparound, the framework for everything we're going to talk about today. The second is estimating costs. And the third is planning your budget. Those two things I'm going to pull together into one discussion. And the fourth process is controlling costs, which takes into account the monitor, the control, the reporting, and dealing with exceptional issues like cost overruns and requests for change. So the first thing to think about is your project cost management plan. This is the overarching framework within which you're going to manage costs on your project. It's one of two essential financial management documents on anything but the smallest projects. The other one, of course, being your business case. We've got a video about that if you need to learn about business case. Your cost management plan is an important document because it gives your client, your sponsor, your boss a strong indication of your ability to understand how much money you're going to spend, how you're going to control that expenditure, and how you're going to account for it once you've spent it. For smaller projects, your project cost management plan may be just an element in a wider project plan, but clearly, as your project gets bigger, you may want to separate this out into its own document. And of course, the two principal elements of your cost management plan are on the one hand, budgeting and estimating, and on the other hand, monitoring and controlling. The first sets out how you're going to create a budget, the process you're going to use for estimating the elements of the budget that you're going to have. And the second is the monitor and control process, the mechanisms you're going to use to track expenditure on your project and keep everything under control. So this document is fundamentally an important part of your project governance. There may be other components that you need to bring in because of the nature of the guidelines, the policies, the procedures within your organization or set out by your PMO, your project program or portfolio management office. So the first thing you need to think about is establishing the costs for your project. And this is about estimating and budgeting. And I know that the PMI separate these into two processes within their PMBOK guide. I think of them as highly integrated. But it's important to note that estimating is one of the hardest disciplines for project managers. I've written a guide about how to estimate on a project, and I'm not going to talk about that in any great detail here. However, I am going to talk about the essentials of what needs to go into a project budget. Uh, but before we do that, let's answer the question, why do we need a budget for our project at all? Why do we need to estimate our costs and put them into a formal document? Well, firstly, you'll use your budget as the basis for creating your investment appraisal and your business case, the document that will justify 
whether or not your project is viable. Secondly, it's important in calculating the funding requirement, how much money your project needs to secure either internally or potentially borrowed from the lending markets. And of course, therefore, it's essential to have a proper budget if you're to win approval from within your organization. Moving forward, your budget is also going to be important in framing negotiations with suppliers, either for goods or for services. And once you've got those contracts in place, your budget is part of the process of controlling the costs from those contractors. And let's not forget the importance of reporting, actually giving your sponsor, your boss, client good information about how things are proceeding. And the final thing I'd mention is the importance of having a good budget in establishing the success criteria for your project, how you will measure either success or failure of your project. One of those elements is the extent to which you hit your budget and stay within your contingency, or indeed the extent to which you don't need your contingency at all. The best way to do estimating on a project is task by task. So we typically build our budget using a tool like a spreadsheet, and we start from a work breakdown structure, a list of all the tasks that need to get done, or if you're based in the US, a list of the products that need to get created. Once you've got your work breakdown structure, you can do your estimates line by line. And there are also different types of a budget item. And so your spreadsheet could be in the form of a table. Each task could have different budget headings assigned to it, different types of expenditure. Typical categories of expenditure include the following. First, there's time. Contractor or consultant time is usually charged either by the hour or by the day. Secondly, there's the time of your own people the people within your organization who are working on the project. Now, not every organization accounts for the time of its staff on a project. But my advice is that it is always good practice to do so, even if you don't need to make contributions for their time through the internal systems. So I would budget for that, but have that as a very separate budget heading so that if your organization doesn't need to account for it, you don't include it in the business case. But tracking people's time gives you an indication of how effective you are in managing your project. Next, of course, we've got the costs of materials, supplies, products that go into making your project work. And then, of course, we've got the costs of acquiring and using assets, often lease costs or higher costs, or maybe internal recharges there may be other direct costs to your project, such as travel or printing or marketing of some sort. You may need to purchase some equipment too. And finally, there are taxes and foreign exchange costs, which may not be recoverable. So for those, you need to speak with your finance team to understand what you need to include. There are other costs as well. These are indirect costs which cannot be attributed solely to your project, but the organization may want your project to account for a portion of those indirect costs to give a sense of how much the project is really costing the organization. And some organizations treat the time cost of their own employees in that way. However, more typical examples include things like premises costs software licenses, office equipment, telecoms charges, insurance and banking costs, things like foreign exchange and interest rates. And finally, there may be some form of general administrative overhead for using the facilities within the organization. When you're building your budget, it's also important to take account of uncertainties, things you don't know. Examples include fluctuations in the cost of raw materials, foreign exchange rates, foreign exchange rates and interest rates, inflation, external risks like weather and events. And finally, 
uncertainties in time and materials contracts with consultants and contractors. Fixed fee contract is highly predictable. But if you take on consultants or contractors on a time and materials basis, then they will charge you for the time they use. And whilst they may give you estimates, you won't know exactly how much you're going to be spending on them until you receive their invoice. It does make sense to put in control mechanisms in the contract, but that's a topic for another video. We handle all this by putting contingency into our budget, possibly contingency under a number of different headings. And by the way, the PMBOK guide refers to contingency in this sense as reserves. Governance is clearly an important part of project cost management. Certainly, you need some mechanism on a large project for financial review. And whilst the PMI's project management body of knowledge is lamentably light, certainly in its sixth edition on project governance, we can look to Axelos's PRINCE2 methodology for the best guidance in governing a project wisely. And one of the things that PRINCE2 recommends is that for large projects that are spending large amounts of money or subject to high levels of public scrutiny or oversight, is that the project has what it calls a senior financial officer, which mirrors the role of the senior responsible officer on the project. Now, in Pred's terms, that's very similar to what most of us think of as a project sponsor. The senior financial officer has a level of responsibility for the project, but targeted solely on its financial accountability. Now, it's not the responsibility of the SFO to carry out project cost management, but it is their responsibility to oversee that process and to take checks and to work with the project manager to make sure that she or he is doing that aspect of their job well and properly. Another thing that PRINCE2 is very strong on that appears in many project management methodologies is the idea of project gateways or stage gates. And the idea of using those checkpoints on your project to validate the level of cost control, to observe the extent to which the project is running on or over or behind budget, and then to make appropriate recommendations at that point. When we talk about monitoring and controlling, what we're doing is separating out the initial process of observing how much is being spent against budget and the controlling process of taking corrective steps if expenditure is not where it should be. If I'm honest, for most small projects, a good, well-constructed spreadsheet is the best tool to use for monitoring and controlling our projects and it can also have use as a reporting tool. However, spreadsheets are dangerous as your projects get bigger and more complex. Many spreadsheets have small errors in them. You need a more carefully validated tool. And also, a spreadsheet that you understand because you built it may not be understandable to me if I need to take over your project for whatever reason. So as your project gets bigger, you need some dedicated tool. There are some standalone project cost management tools built especially for the project environment. Likewise, many financial management tools used in large organizations have project capability, the ability to set up a project, to load up the work breakdown structure, to allocate costs against each item, and therefore to use the internal financial management tool as your project cost management tool. But many project managers will prefer a dedicated project management tool that acts as a project management information system, but also integrates with all of the other planning capabilities. I'm not the right person to advise you on the best project management tools and software to use. But what I can say is there are a number of things a good project management information system needs to be able to do 
if it's going to support you properly in good project cost management. It needs to be able to gather, to record, and to store safely all of your project cost information, both the budget and the outturn. It needs to be able to collate that information and allocate it into budget headings in the ways that will suit you in understanding your project. And it needs to give you the tools you need to analyze your expenditure and your costs to really understand what's going on. And finally, a good project management information system needs to be able to present the information clearly so that you can use it both for reporting and for face to face presentations. Another tool which is frankly outside the scope of this video is earned value management or sometimes referred to as earned value analysis. And again, we have a video on that, but it is important for you to understand the potential of earned value management to support you in good project cost management. Whatever tools you use, whether it's earned value management or tools embedded in your project management information system, you need to be able to create trends of expenditure to analyze those trends and to produce forecasts. And based on those forecasts, you need to be able to select appropriate actions and make recommendations to the governance structures within and around your project. If things go wrong, you need to be prepared to make changes to your budget, to your plan, to your baseline, and to put those changes through a rigorous process of change control. You also need a mechanism to reflect what's happening and your risk register and your issue log, and a mechanism to draw down on contingencies if you have them. And finally, if things do start to go wrong, you need to incorporate what's happening into your review of lessons learned so that they don't continue to go wrong in the future. The final thing to mention is the need to tailor your project cost management approach to the nature of your project and to the culture of the organization within which it works. Clearly, the most significant tailoring decisions are based on firstly, the scale and complexity of your project. The bigger your project is, the more robust your project cost management probably needs to be. And secondly, the nature of the project management approach that you're taking. Crudely, on the one hand, you may be taking a highly planned predictive approach. And on the other hand, you may be taking a highly adaptive agile approach. And clearly your project cost management approach needs to be tailored to that. Project cost management is one of the most important skills that a project manager can have. Project cost overruns are common. But is this cause for a defeatist attitude? No. Instead, you must act with determination to understand project cost management and to apply a rigorous process to your project. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And why not subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.